welcome for the first time on the Metal Voice, Ernie C, or shall we say Mr. Cunningham? How are you doing today? You got Mr. Cunningham again. There's no H's. See, there's okay. no H's. I mean, it's, that's not the first time. Don't. <laughs> Yeah. Well, once again, first time on the show, Ernie C. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Cunningham. You know, I I started calling me Ernie C in in high school because everyone would call me Cunningham, and then they would call me everything else. So they just called me Mister C. So that's correct. Strange enough, my name is Jimmy K. It's because my name is so long, I shortened. Right. It, so we have the yeah. same yeah. issue. Same we got problem. we got to do that. You know. New album, Body Count, The Merciless. It's going to come out on Century Media. November 22nd, mm -hmm. this is, I don't know, what are you at, album six or seven now? Or are we around there? Eight. I think we're about eight. We're about eight. Look at that. We're about eight. You know, you know First, uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just saying, it, it, it's eight, you know, it's, it's this the fourth one with this lineup that we have, yeah. you know, because yeah. we've had uh, seven different lineups of the band and the only ones that's worked is the first one the guys on the first two records and the la the guys on this record all the ones the five in the middle yeah you know ernie you're 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 a great fantastic guitar player just just love your playing over the years oh thank you so much so you know i've been at it a while now it's been like 50 plus years <laughs> of playing the guitar so a lot of years. <laughs> yeah you get pretty good after you know after the first 30. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the band and I love the production especially on the last three albums yeah. but what did you do differently I could say song wise or production wise or anything what did you do different this time around than last time around well you know um Will Putney, the, the last record has been produced by Will Putney. And so I just decided at a point, because I produced some of the early records and stuff like that, and I produced records. I just decided I'm just going to play guitar and just focus on playing the guitar. And it makes life run a lot smoother when mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about, you know, because I used to do mixes and then somebody would come by and say, yeah, that guitar is really loud. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to make my guitar loud. So and I did different mixes for the drummer. And so... I just said, I'm going to play guitar. And since I started playing guitar, not that I didn't play guitar at the beginning, mm -hmm. things are a lot smoother. And my stress level is down. <laughs> you know, it's interesting, but, you, but when you're listening to mixes and you're involved in one of those tracks, you tend to not hear it's louder than everybody else, right? Yeah. And you don't, you don't <laughs> do it on purpose. You know, I learned that from working with Tony Iommi. And I, I worked with Tony and I said, you can produce these records, but he's like, but I don't want to produce them. It's easier just to play the guitar. And that's what, you know, I learned that from him. And after that, I was just like, eh, I'm, I'm not obligated to produce the record. That's that's something else. I just want to play guitar. In the last four records, you know, I, I you know, quit drinking like 15 years ago and everything just starts going real smooth. Uh, music wise, what did you do different this time around than last time? If someone was to ask you, it's it's just another bunch of body count songs. Is that it? Yeah, I think I think it's just the same same idea that we had when we started the band. Just write some music, and you know, just play the songs. You know, on this record at, at the beginning when the band first started, we were like so involved we had to write the songs. But of late, you know, last records we're like. Jamie Jasper has a song. Cool, bring it over. Let's play it. If, you know, if, you know, whoever comes in with a song. If Randy has a song from Lamb of God, bring it on. You know, so it's like we're accepting material from other people, but no matter what, it comes out sounding like body count after you put it through the grinder. <laughs> do you do you ever like go to Ice and you go? Maybe we're crossing the line sometimes in lyrics, or maybe you don't. I don't know. Like from throughout the whole career, right? You know, you know, we we were the first band to be banned like, as far as uh, count, uh, what do they call it now? Council culture. We were council culture thirty years ago, so we've crossed the line. So I don't think there's any more lines we can cross. Everything now is just like we're just saying saying the truth now. So you, sometimes you say the truth, are you crossing the line? So I don't know. I, I think it is sometimes society's line, but not your line, right? Of, of yeah. ethical lines, no. No, I, we have, we, you know, we have no lines, you know, there's, there's some things that are off limits that, you know, aren't correct. And we, that you know, at having morals, we wouldn't cross those lines, you know, so there's no lines. We, we're just, we're waiting to see what happens. Ernie, man, I remember the, when the, your first album came out and 
the you know like it was the song cop killer was supposed to be on it but they removed it completely it was like unheard of it was it was it was for me i've I've always believed that rock metal punk whatever you want to call it always a form of speaking out a rebellion right it, it, that's where it fits and anybody who sort of dilutes that isn't really in the in the spirit of the music or the genre yeah that's what rock is supposed to be it's supposed to rock i mean it's supposed to rock the house you know elvis all the way back everybody shook up little richard they shook up the system you know so even like led zeppelin they shook the system so if you're if you're too watered down and too commercial you're not rock and roll you're something else you're pop you're, you're, you're pop music you know do you still get flack over the cop killer today or that has just kind of gone down, die down? You know, it's it's like we played uh, like a few years back and, and some kids came to the show. You know, they, they only know Ice from Law and Order. They didn't know the band. They're like, it, it, they heard the song Cop Killer. They said, that, that's a bad song. You should put that on a record. I'm like, <laughs> they're like, you know, they're, they're 20 something years old. You know, that record came out 30, 33 years ago now. So they'd have no idea. So, <laughs> but, but I mean, is, are they still, or, or has everybody kind of like grown out of that sort of? Everyone still, when they hear it, it still it still gets the audience. It's still the last song that we play at a show, just because the audience gets really amped up up over it. So I, we don't get flack over it anymore. Everybody accepts the song for what it is. Okay. You know? All right. So. Well, uh, going back to the new album, David Gilmore. Wow, look at that! You got a legend coming on playing with you. How did that come about? Well, you know, I, I told Ice, I said, you're going to have to do Sabbath. I said, the English guitar players really love us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get the Black Sabbath in a minute, but tell me okay. about David Gilmore. <laughs> well, okay, so what happens was, you know, we, we Ice had an idea of doing the song. It was in his vocal range. He, he had the lyrics where he switched it up and brought it up to date. That song's 50 years old. So we, we played the song. We, we, we were practicing the song. So my bass player, he's Richie Sambora's guitar tech. So Richie Sambora and I played on the original one. The, wow. It was done and finished. It was done. Richie, Richie, Richie has some good stuff. I, I, I hope one day they release it. So Richie and I played. So then we decided, let's do it right. Let's send it to to David and send it to Roger to get it approved. You know, instead of just throwing it out. So we sent it over to Roger, and Roger's like, "Who's singing on it?" We're like, "Ice T." And he he's like, okay, it's not David. Good. Okay, so <laughs> so he he gave the approval. He says you can you have the approval on it. So we sent it over to David, and David's like, I love it. I absolutely love it. But can I play on it? And we're like, what? What? <laughs> you, yeah, it, it was more like that. <laughs> <laughs> and so he he said, you can send it over to me. I, I have three studios. I'm like. He don't have to explain <laughs> anything to us, you know? And so it was the greatest thing ever. And then we were in Europe uh, this summer, and we, he his, his office called and said, can he come over and play it with you guys? You know, we were, and then it didn't, the, com, it, the, the time it didn't work out. But he called and said, told our office, he says, one time I'm going to come play it with you guys, you know, whenever this wow. might be. I'm gonna, and I was just, you know, what can you say? I mean, you know, it's. What it could possibly say? be one of the greatest all-time solos by a rock band, at least in my opinion. I don't know about you, yeah. but... Yeah, th but that's why Ice chose that song, because it's so open. It's such an empty canvas. You can, you can play every lick that you ever learned on it if you want to. You know, it's like, it's so... It's so the notes are so perfect. You know, it's it's pretty amazing that Roger Waters and, and David Gilmour agreed on something, too, right? Yeah. That's pretty you amazing. Know, yeah. Rolling Stone magazine <laughs> said that they, they haven't agreed on anything in 25 years. And it's the first thing that they agreed uh, agreed on. All right. Some cooler tracks. I think The Purge was, uh, you know, one of the my favorite series I don't, as of lately, uh, movie right. series, that is. I mean, tell me about that. Well, you know, Ice, Ice our, our, my, my high school friend Ice is like a, a, a horror movie guy. You know, even going back to our old albums, we always had kind of, shots of horror movie stuff in it so he came up with the song and we had the music and it you know it, it, it's a we played that song live it's a lot of fun to play so f what you heard is just basically so you, saying we're all we're all in it they're all in on it and it, it has to do with our elections here to what went down last week so you know everyone's crooks once you get into politics 
you, you've gone into crime. So it's a left thin line. or right, <laughs> it's all the same at the end of the day. Exactly. So you, you go, you enter the crime syndicate once you go into politics too deep. I want to also ask you about the Black Sabbath thing that you're talking about with Tony Iommi. Mm-hmm. I know that they came out with. I have it here somewhere. The new remix. Yeah, it's pretty. It's good actually. Yeah, I like it. I like it. And uh, you know, I'm on that. I'm on there. I, my picture is coming out the grave there with the hat. Where were you? Where are you exactly? Somewhere I, there. I, I, somewhere, somewhere in there. Like, like you see ice right there, but I'm right there with a hat turned backwards. Okay, l- let's get. I've talked to Tony Martin, great uh-huh. singer, great guy. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. He's told me, and we've talked about before this was remixed and after it was remixed. Uh-huh. Before it was remixed, you know, he told me there was a lot of tension, maybe. And, 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 and take me back to back when you were brought in to produce the album. Okay, when I was brought in to produce the album, the band didn't bring me in. Uh, uh, Miles Copeland brought me in uh, to Miles, do the yes. record. Yeah, yeah, Miles was like from the label. Miles yeah. brought- yeah, he brought me in. So I went over there and, you know, I, I, my, I was, you know, I was you know, 20, 30 years old or something. I was like, Black Sabbath, I, I'm, you know, I'm going to change, the, make them sound like, bring them up to date. They're going to sound like Nirvana. <laughs> so, so I went in there. And I spent like, like Cozy Powell was the drummer. And I, he came in with four drum sets and he played on each one for an hour. And, 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 and so he did this whole thing. And so I, I said, you know, I mixed the drums and everything the way it was going to sound. And he came in and he had a stopwatch. It was way out stuff. He was timing this stuff with a stopwatch. Uh, you earn, you know, I'm off right there, right? I'm like, really? That's, that's some interesting stuff. I've never seen that before. I'm, I'm from South Central, so we, we didn't have stopwatches. <laughs> so anyway, so we go through the whole thing. And he listens to his drums. And he hands me a tape and says, you know, because I had him, his drums dried up a little bit. You know, it wasn't mm-hmm. the, the big, uh, you know, the big massive sound that he had. He says, mm-hmm. tomorrow I'll make my drums sound like this. I'm like, okay, I got to figure this out now. So <laughs> that's the way that went. So, yeah, they, they wanted to change, but they didn't want to change. They wanted to stay par to the course. So, and I wanted to change it a little more. So it was kind of a a thing well, and then well, like, how do you produce tony iomi though like uh you know like how do you tell me about that how do you produce tony iomi you really don't you just kind of let him play and you know you, you get people brian may pop it into the studio and jeff beck and you're like why am i here <laughs> so, so it, it was it was a it was he was a great guy he was really nice to me and everything like that but the music you know it didn't work out the way we wanted it to, but it, it was a lot, it was a good experience. It made me say to myself, "Okay, I'm accepted, kind of in rock and roll." But it, it, one thing that I it was really cool, he brought that guitar that he played on Iron Man to the studio one night. You know, I'm left-handed and all, mm-hmm. so he said, "Ern, you, you can play this guitar tonight." I'm like, "I can," I'm, and I brought he man, you have never stood in front of a mirror <laughs> as much as I did play that guitar all night long. Did you ever have a moment where you go, uh, Tony, uh, maybe you should try this instead of that? And you're kind of second guessing yourself because this guy's a legend, right? No, no. What happened was he, he was kind of in a place where they were kind of settled in what they were. So what I had the engineer put on the um, the record and I played all through the record. Every song, I played guitar all the way through it. And then Tony came in the next day and said, "Who you played that last night? I said, yep. He said, well, I'm going to play my parts on it now. So he, it got him motivated to play more. So I thought that was kind of cool. And then after that, he did the odds fest. Crazy, crazy. So I got a part of history. So I, 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 you know, I kind of told him when he was doing a band because him and Ozzy weren't getting along. I said, you know, you should do something with Ozzy, you know, because you guys are the, the, what it is, you know? And after that, he started the odds fest. And, and also I got a, a, at the studio, I got a, a cease and desist uh, letter from from uh, Sharon, and it was like you know, and she, and Tony says, "Oh, she don't worry about that. She does that to everyone. She's just trying to scare you." I'm like, "Well, she's doing a damn good job." <laughs> <laughs> what about Tony Martin? His vocals. I mean, they're, they're, he, he was just. Tony, Tony was good, but you know the the thing that Tony had to live with. He 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 had. 
to go against Ozzy and yeah, Dio, yeah, and so he had to step into those shoes. So he had a a, a thing that he was like kind of. <laughs> A little, because Tony would say, "Well, Dio would sing it like." I'm like, "Oh, why are you gonna say that?" <laughs> no, but, but but you know what's amazing about this album? And I'll just on the last note, it, you know, people didn't see the true gem that it was because mm -hmm. maybe the mix wasn't where it should have been back then. But with the new mix today, this is like a brand new album, right? And you know, and also, I, Ice is the only guest who's ever been on a, a Black Sabbath album. Yeah, and, you know. And he, he had Cozy Powell on it, and and Jeff, and you know it was it was it was a good record. It was it was a good record. If it wasn't Black Sabbath, it would have been a great record. But because it was Black Sabbath, they had such high expectations. It wasn't the record they expected. Yeah, you you know what I I got I gotta say though, like I wasn't a biggest fan of this record, but after getting the remix, I gotta say, man, you knocked it out of the park. I mean, I'm just I know that you know oh, the thanks. remix was somebody else. But you put it together. At the end of the day, you put it together. I mean, regardless. Thank you. All the all the parts were there. Just the mixes were just a little different, you know. But uh, the thing about it was, when people say it was a bad album, whatever, I, I always say, "How many Black Sabbath records have you produced?" Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but you should see the online critiques on this. They love this. This album yeah. has as a new yes. It's it's, it's, it's yeah. It, it, I'm proud. You're of it. redeemed. I'm, you redeemed yourself. A big time. Thank you. Big thank time. You. Big time. All right, you know, and also. Oh, real quick, and also from from that, I met Eddie Van Halen from from producing Sabbath. You know, Tony told me he said, "Whenever you get a chance, go say hi to Eddie for me." I'm like, "Okay." So I went and said hi to Eddie for him at a concert. I made my way back and I said hi to Eddie, and he was the nicest guy to me. You know, he, first he was trying to figure out who I was, who's the black guy <laughs> handing me a picture of Tony Iommi, said I produced Black Sabbath. I'm like. <laughs> So then he started giving me every phone number that he had. And he was a friend for many years. Wow, that's amazing. So David Gilmore, Eddie Van Halen, Brian May. Yeah. Were, were you friends with Brian May? Uh, no, I just I just heard all their stories. They would, we went to dinner a few times. And I heard the, the, the English stories of, you know, because they all grew up in uh, Birmingham. So it's yeah, like an yeah. a, 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 a interesting, I, I just sat back on the wall just listening. That's and amazing. Jeff Beck, and Jeff Beck came to the studio one night. Ernie, your your and, dreams are coming true. It's just yeah, meeting, and, meeting. And what's so funny about it? Jeff Beck gave me a Jeff a pick, right? And Jeff Beck don't play with a pick. Oh wow, that's cool. <laughs> he played. He played with his fingers. <laughs> Who are your most? Which guitarist did you grow up on? Saying you know what? The, the, these were my sort of idols, like the top three. Well, when I when I first started, it was Ernie Isley. You know who who plays with the Isley Brothers? Who you know people don't may or may not know it. Jimi Hendrix was the guitar player for the Isley Brothers. So mm -hmm. Ernie Isley, I, I I liked him. It was more it was easy to digest. You know when I was thirteen years old. But I liked uh, Richie Blackmore. He and Jimmy Page. Those were my guys. You know Hendrix came later, and uh, it only came because I was black and left handed. It was like you like Hendrix. I'm like not true, really, yeah. but. Give me give me a record. I'll listen to him. So I listened to Hendrix, and you know, so and then we later on we got to cover Hey Joe, Great the song, Hendrix yeah. song, yeah. and Eddie Kramer produced it, which was amazing. And and the thing about it was, Eddie, there was a lot of records. You know, it was a Warner Brothers record. They had Slash on it. They had Pat Metheny and Eric Clapton was on that record. And the only record that he produced was our record, right? And so. He mixed it at Electric Ladyland. And so I went out there and I'm sitting with him. I'm like, why did you choose us? You know, he says, I think Jimmy would have liked you. So That's, cool. That. That's cool. That was cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Tell me about touring. What are you guys going to do in regards to a tour? Are you going out? Well, we went out, uh, you know, that pandemic just threw everything all in a, in a mix because we were going to tour uh, off a of carnivore. We haven't really gotten to play carnivore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You know, Carnivore won a Grammy, so, so we were like, okay, yeah. And that was way out the blue. You know, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> so we we didn't play then. Then when the pandemic was over in 22, we were going to go out and play. Then everyone was still getting sick. So we just went out last summer. Mm -hmm. So we played some songs from this record. Uh, we're going to do some spot dates coming up in the in the states. We're going to play. We, we might get up to Canada some kind of way, mm. but we're playing some big festivals in the United States. Uh, we're going to do television. 
Wow. Jimmy Kimmel. We're going to do Jimmy Kimmel's show. Uh, you know, not Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon. NBC Jimmy Fallon. Fallon. Yeah, NBC. <laughs> the, I other, the other Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Exactly. So we're going to do that and do some spot dates. And probably, you know, in 20, um, 26, these years go by so fast. The year after next, we'll we'll go to Europe and, you know, Canada. We're going to play some warp tours. Okay. The, the, uh, you, you, play, you played, I think, the last time in Canada was at Heavy Montreal. Yes, we played there. Now, we were just talking about that because I, my bass player, we were like, who do we play there with? I said, Twisted Sister played there with us. And yeah, it was a big, it was a big lineup at that year. There's uh, a, a, Lamb of God. Yeah. Oh yeah, and, uh, I can't remember. They don't do the festival anymore, but uh, it was a great festival. No, nah, unless yeah. they bring it back. Actually, we got caught. We got uh, we missed the plane going there, and we were in an airport somewhere sleeping. And then the next morning, we woke up to catch the plane to go to Montreal. Because oh we we're in Dallas and we missed the plane and we had to catch the first plane in the morning so we slept at the airport and, and somebody was woke up and says isn't that iced tea and cocoa over there sleeping <laughs> like, yeah. uh, you know I always thought you were related to uh, iced tea I thought you guys were related somehow no no we've been I, but I've known them since you know the seventies you know we weren't the high okay. school you're you're kind that, of uh, friends I family mean, friends yeah. Yeah, we've been we've been knowing each other for beginning of time. So, you know, it's, it's me, uh, our road manager. We, we all went to high school together. So we've been together 52 years or something like that. Did I, was I, okay, you were in the rock world. You were in the every world, all the genres. Right. Was Ice in the rock world as well back in the day? Yeah, Ice was always into punk rock. He's more punk rock than I am. I'm more heavy metal. Yeah, I'm yeah, more yeah. like that. He's... Our first record sounded more punk, though. It the was, first yeah, record that yeah, we did, yeah, yeah. it sounded more punk. Now, now the band's kind of getting real, you know, staccato, you know, like, like that. But he's always been at that. But he was a break dancer. Mm, back, back when break dancing was this big, big, massive thing. Yeah. Yes. You know, you know, we're we're in break dancing movies. We're in Electric Boogaloo together. <laughs> I've never seen it, but that's good to oh, know. You gotta, did you break dance too? Did you break dance also? I was, I was the band. You got to see the movie. You have to. Let see me tell you, Ernie. I'm so old. Uh, you know, I had a friend who was in break dancing groups. They were great break uh, yeah, dancing exactly. groups, right? That's what it was exactly. back then, with their own jackets and everything. Yes, was... exactly. Look up, look up Electric Boogaloo, and you'll see Ice T and myself in that, and rapping a movie called Rapping. This is the early '80s, '82. Yeah, how far did 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 rap come from New York? Did it come from L.A. or was it, it, rap? Rap came from New York. Kind of break. Uh, they were doing uh, break dancing. L.A. started um, locking, which was like a different style. You know, more like the robots and stuff. L.A. started the lockers. You know, with Tony Basil and those people. You know. Oh, Mickey, and you're Scavenger. so fine. You blow my mind. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where did when when you first came out with your first album? I know we're going all over the place, but you're an interesting yeah. character. Yeah. Would you go? Okay, you know we're in the rap world. Ice mm -hmm. is in the rap world, and I like you know hard rock and mm -hmm. metal. Whose idea was let's fuse this together? No, Ice has Ice has always been wanting to do a, a rock band, and so I always say, well, you started a band just because you got tired of everybody borrowing money from you. So <laughs> it's, it's easier to have a, a band and make money than it is to lend it out. But we we started first of all. I was trying to get a record deal. He was trying to help me get a record deal, and I was just like, I'm not a singer. I don't want to sing. I'm not trying to be Jimi Hendrix. And then he sang. He would come on, and then he started singing a few songs. I'm like. Hey, boss, you're good at this. Why don't you just do it? So then we, he just did it, and, you know, and, and it worked. It worked. The thing about it was it worked really well. So yeah, there, there's something the about the angst of rapping and the angst of hard rock, punk and metal that sort of works well together, that it's got that same vibe, right? You know, because there's like uh, 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 Run DMC and um, Aerosmith. Aerosmith. But that's a novelty. You know, I thought yeah, we is. were the first one that was like a real band. You know, we were a real band. You guys were with a friggin' attitude. That that was a big difference. Like Beastie Boys too, right? That was more like funny, cute, you know, yeah. we got to fight for our rights. But it, it was really more in uh, com comical than anything else, right? You know, because we used to have the guys on stage with shotguns and stuff like that. And that was at a time where, you know, rock was like skulls and, you know, odd, bat heads and all that kind of stuff. But we're like... 
this is really scary. This is inner city. This is more scary than anything. <laughs> um, on that note, is there anything else you want to talk about on your new album? You want to tell everybody? No, I think I think it's a, a really good record. I'm looking forward to getting out and playing it, you know, because last time we didn't get to play it. We played some this summer. We played some songs. We went out, played like three songs. But, you know, I, I'm happy that we're still around doing records, you know, 30 some years later. It's like it's an honor and a privilege to be here. You know, it's funny. I think you guys are getting better every album. I, I don't know what I, maybe it's just me. I, I there's there's, there's so, maybe you're we're, coming together. We're, we're, Will Putney has a lot to do with this. You know, we have Corpse Grinder on this record. We have, uh, uh, who else do we have? Uh, Max on it from Sepultura. I always say Sepultura because that's where I know him from. But we have uh, Joe Bad from Fit for an Autopsy. We have guests on this record, but we don't go out and try to find them. They, they're they usually just around. They say, you want to be on this track? And it, it just happens. So uh, unless the records it's just, aren't getting better. Uh, unless it's just David Gilmore saying, sure, I'd love to be on your record. And yeah, he, he just he, he bum rushes the record. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ernie C, thank you so much. A pleasure talking to you. I love your attitude. Uh, I love so your much. music. Thank you so much for everything. And uh, you know what? We'll see you on tour, hopefully, in Canada or in the we U.S. Will. What, yeah. One last thing. What did your shirt say? Iron Maiden, Al Alexander the Great. Iron Maiden, Alexander the okay. Great. I, I, I was trying to figure it out. I was going here. Okay, thank you so Isn't much. Isn't that cool? Isn't yes, that cool? it is. I'm not sure if you're an Iron Maiden fan. I'm not a big Iron Maiden fan, but we've toured with them. I'm like, wow, this it's a good. My bass player loves them to death. I'm I'm more of a you know Zeppelin kind of guy. Oh, you know? I love Led Zeppelin. I love Led yeah, Zeppelin. But, I'm that guy. Uh, will that magic ever happen again? These four guys, these four individuals. It, I've yet to see it. I've yet to I, see. I, I don't know, but I, I like uh, uh, Van Sweet. What's the name of the band? Uh, Red Van Van, Van Fleet. They're cute. They like Led Zeppelin too. <laughs> they're, they're cute. We, we played with them. I went and saw them. I thought they were, you know, they're like they're like Led Zeppelin too. It's kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. Little baby Zeppelin. Little baby. You know, man, that guy can sing. Man, he can sing. Yeah. Hey, he's a great it's singer. Good. Did they have an enthusiasm that I do like about them? I, I, yeah, I, you know, it, it's as close as we're going to get right now. Yeah, yeah. On that note, cool. Ernie yes. C, thank you so much, my friend. Have yourself a wonderful day, and thank you for the interview. No problem.